Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, it's wonderful to have you. My name is Stella. I make lighthearted videos on my journey with chronic illness and disability. And for a bit of context, I have Ellis Danlos syndrome, the hypermobile type. I've also got lupus, the autoimmune condition, and chronic Lyme disease. And along with those, I have the comorbidities that go along with them, such as POTS, mast cell activation syndrome, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, <laughs> allergies and sensitivities, and the list goes on. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm sure you've seen the title, so with that really long intro, let's get into the video. So a couple of days ago, I got a text message that I wasn't expecting from the NHS, which is our National Health Service here in the UK. We have a socialised healthcare system here. And so you're under what's known as the National Health Service. And I've been under investigation for cardiology because of lupus and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome can cause some heart issues. And I have a lot of things going on, such as heart palpitations and fainting. Oh, do I faint? <laughs> That's been an ongoing thing since I was really young. And it's just never really been investigated. And recently, it's just been getting worse and worse and worse. And I feel like a lot of my things are either controlled with medication, lifestyle changes, stuff like that. But my fainting just isn't. If you haven't seen, I did a video about getting my 24 hour ECG with a halter monitor. Um, I did a whole video on that. And then next on the list was to get an echocardiogram, which is what I'm getting today. But I wasn't expecting to get it so soon because with the global situation, I guess everywhere's had a backlog. But anyway, I got a letter saying that I needed to get it done imminently. So that made me worried because I'm like, did something show up on my ECG? I'm pretty sure it did because I fainted that day. I had a seizure that day. I had lots of heart palpitations, but they're not going to let me know until I've done all my tests. So I'm just kind of in the dock. But anyway, that happened. And for some reason, my appointment's on a Sunday, which is really weird. We never really have clinics on a Sunday. But again, I think they're just trying to catch up with all the backlog. And I'm not going to say no. I'm happier to get an earlier appointment. And if you don't know, an echocardiogram is essentially an ultrasound. They do an ultrasound of your heart, the structure of your heart, the blood vessels around it, see how your blood, your blood, see how your heart <laughs> pumps blood around your body, if it's a good shape and all these things. Does that, is that even a thing? Is it a good shape? <laughs> you guys know what I'm saying. And yeah, essentially it can detect a lot of things and it just takes imagery of your heart and the valves and all the things that it does. So that's what I'm going for today. It's at a weirdly late time, 4.30 p.m. on a Sunday. And if you don't know, I am freaking scared of hospitals. For somebody who's chronically ill and who has to go to the hospital an awfully lot amount of times it never gets easier for me <laughs> I'm there a lot but I oh gosh it is like my worst nightmare and anyway but I always get through it and afterwards it's pretty fine so anyway I am on my way now and uh, yeah I'm gonna take you along with me I'm not sure how much of it I can film because it is a hospital in the end of the day but I'm going to try my best because, you know, I just want anyone who might be going through something similar, getting similar tests to see what it's like. Um, so, yeah, let's go.
It's very quiet. The way I like it. Yeah. Oh, I'm so scared of hospitals. You sing my theme tune. Oh, it's so quiet. Mm -hmm. Just the way I like it. It's because we're going on a Sunday afternoon and I think most appointments are over. This is where we're going. Thank you, Chris. It's even dark. <laughs> Why is it so dark? taken I did my weight and nearly fainted <laughs> so the woman just did my blood pressure which is good it's my blood pressure just waiting now The doctor walked out of the room for about 10 minutes and as she did I started to feel really faint and dizzy. This is why Chris got a bit of footage because she wasn't in the room but you'll see what happens later on in the video. Just coming out and I'm so disappointed I'll fill you guys in in a bit but essentially I fainted. It's like an airport, this hospital. <laughs> no. Let go. Did you call the Uber? Yeah, eight minutes. Just waiting for the Uber now. Mm, I feel so disappointed in myself, but basically I fainted, which is becoming a real habit of mine. And um, yeah, I guess I'll have to fill you in when I get in. So they couldn't complete it. They were going to send me to A&E, but thankfully my blood pressure and stuff was fine. So they decided that they're going to call the consultant instead and get back to me. Yeah. consoling me so rough <laughs> two hours later you know you come to console mama oh you come to console mama come baby <clears throat> Oh, 
anyway so i'm sure you guys saw me talking about the fact that i fainted it is now a few hours after my appointment because i had to just sit and sort of gather myself and kind of come to terms with what happened essentially things didn't quite go to plan um that can happen sometimes but you know it's always disappointing when that happens but i just i need to just sit here and just not be upset about it or not be disappointed in myself about it but essentially what happened was we got there by uber so i can't drive obviously um we don't have a car so we go by uber i mean we live in london we don't really need to drive and to be honest with you, I don't go out much anyway, other than to the hospital. So we got an Uber and the Uber driver was driving really fast. I have really bad car sickness. Plus I have POTS. So I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this. If somebody's driving really fast or doing really fast corners and the car's shaking, it can really aggravate your POTS. So I was feeling really nauseous from that. And I felt like I was going to faint. And I was like, in, I was sitting there in the car going, please don't faint, please don't faint, please don't faint. And thankfully I didn't faint in the car, but we turned up and I was about 10 minutes early. But you know, you need time to get there, to walk through the hospital, see where it is, blah, blah, blah. So we went straight in. And then the first thing I saw was, and not first thing, the first person I saw was a nurse. So she takes your weight, your blood pressure and so on. But obviously when they weigh you, you need to get out of your wheelchair. And I was already super dizzy and nauseous from that car journey. And she asked me to stand so she can weigh me. So I stood and I think she just about got my weight and height. And I just felt really dizzy. I'm not sure if Chris captured that or not. But I felt really dizzy and I thought I was going to faint. So I quickly sat in my wheelchair and I was like I'm really sorry I feel really faint and the woman was like do you have POTS and I was like yeah so then she took my blood pressure but thankfully my blood pressure was fine because it was like quite some time after maybe five minutes after because she let me calm down a bit and thankfully my blood pressure was fine she was like are you okay I'll let you sit here for a minute I was like yeah I'm fine so because I started to feel a bit better then I went into the echocardiogram room, they got me to put on a hospital gown, the woman put the things on me and then she left the room and she was gone for, I don't know, five, ten minutes, which is why Chris managed to film a little bit. And in that time, I started to feel really dizzy again, but I don't know why, because it wasn't hospitally, if that makes sense. Like I didn't see any hospital type stuff other than the echocardiogram machine i hope you guys know what i mean but usually when i see hospital stuff i see like hospital <laughs> apparatus and that's kind of what makes me anxious but anyway i started to feel dizzy again and started to feel nauseous and then when she came in she came in kind of at that moment when i felt really dizzy and nauseous but i had sort of been laying standing they kept making me stand up sit down and all these things i don't know why they were doing that and then she put on this cold gel on me and she was pressing on my rib. Now, this rib sort of subluxes quite a bit and she was pressing right there. And I, and I said to her, like, it's quite painful for me. And she was like, oh, I'm sorry, we have to press hard because that's how we see the heart valve and everything. It's going to be like an hour of this. And I was like, OK, I said, thanks for letting me know. And she carried on. And then as she kept doing it, I guess the pain started triggering me. And then the car journey situation and then me having to stand up and sit down and i said to her like i feel like i'm gonna faint i said to her and she was like okay we'll stop i turned over i think she left the room and i fainted i just passed out um thankfully chris was there um he was like holding me onto the bed so i don't fall off the bed and then when I woke up, there was like three other people there who I now know were like another nurse and a more senior doctor. And they were just like, they put an ECG on me to check my heart was okay. It was fine. They did more blood pressure. 
they I don't know I don't know what they did but they did a few things on me and they were saying well you might have to go into A&E and see if like it's anything more serious and I was like no I'm fine the woman wanted to check my blood sugar if you know me you know I'm scared of blood I was like please I don't have diabetes like I really prefer not to do that she was like it's just a prick on the finger and I was like I know but I'm really scared of blood and I'll faint again <laughs> And I said, you know, when I do blood tests and stuff, I have to take diazepam. If you don't know what diazepam is, it's um, like a anti-anxiety medication that they give to people for like extreme anxiety. I don't take it all the time. I just take it when I'm about to have a blood test, which is how I know I've got these conditions because obviously you have to have a blood test for lupus and such. So I convinced her not to do that. She asked me a series of questions about my conditions and stuff. And she was like, look, I'm worried about you. I don't think we can continue with the echocardiogram. And I was like, I'm fine now, please. Can we carry on? And the senior doctor was like, we're going to speak with the um, consultant, your consultant cardiologist and get back to you because today it's just not going to happen. We don't feel safe continuing with the echocardiogram. So they asked me to get dressed and stuff. And then she came back in and I asked her questions. I was like, am I gonna get another chance to do this? What's gonna happen? And she said, honestly, I can't tell you. They're gonna have to speak to the senior consultant cardiologist who is looking over my case and get back to me. So I guess it's that fact of uncertainty that kind of like upsets me because I've been waiting so long, I'd say many years to get my heart looked at. And also my granddad um, died from a heart attack at a really young age and all these things. So it does run in the family. And another thing is, is my brother's getting married in a couple of weeks and I haven't been approved to fly because of my heart situation because it's still under investigation. My doctor was like, you can't fly. We don't know what's wrong with you. So it's a whole bunch of things. And I was just really hoping to get this over with and just get some answers. But it just wasn't in the cards. So I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if I'm going to get another chance to do an echocardiogram. I don't know if they got enough data. I have no idea. Um, so unfortunately, that's how it went. <laughs> But, you know, I just I just need to sit here and just be like, OK, it couldn't be helped. I don't choose to faint. It's out of my control. My husband was consoling me and saying, like, it's nobody's fault. You know, it's not like you did this on purpose. And I'm like, yeah, I know. And I did tell them about my fainting prior to it. And yeah, so although I'm a little disappointed, I'm still proud of myself for going and giving it a try and yeah it was the best i could do and i got a bit of footage for you guys so yeah and please if you're having an echocardiogram please don't let this put you off it wasn't scary i promise you it wasn't a scary thing it was just that i had had that car journey and i had been asked to stand up and sit down and i have pots and so that in combination with her pressing on my rib that dislocates was just too much for me so that's just what happened and i guess this is going to be a series or something because this isn't over my cardiology journey isn't over and i'm sure i'll make more videos on it and i'll definitely fill you in with what happens next and yeah so i guess i'm going to end this video here thank you for watching and being on this journey with me um I would really like it if you kindly like this video and subscribe down below. It helps me out so much. And yeah, grateful to have you here watching and thank you again. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Three days later. So a few days later, I got this letter. Pause the screen if you want to read it. But it's a letter telling me that I've got a tilt table test, but I'm surprised because I wasn't expecting it because of my disability. I was told it wouldn't happen. So stay tuned. I will fill you in with what happens next because Chris can't come in with me, so we can't film, but I'll still let you know. 
I don't know what's going to happen, guys. <laughs> See you in the next one. Bye.